Welcome to the Taste Test channel and this week we'll be taking an impartial look at chocolate chip cookies from around the world to discover what the differences are and how some of the best selling varieties around the globe differ in taste. By the way things didn't always go quite to plan with the making of the video this week but you'll see what I mean at the outtake near the end. As always, just for fun, we'll be awarding our Taste Test Channel Best in Class Award to the winner. If you're new to the channel, just hit the subscribe button to ensure you don't miss out on any of our regular taste tests. So when did someone first put chocolate chips in a cookie? Well, the honour goes to Ruth Graves Wakefield, the owner of the Toll House in Massachusetts. In the late 1930s, in a moment of inspiration, she chopped up a Nestle chocolate bar and added it to her cookie dough. Shortly afterwards, she released a cookbook and the recipe became known and loved as the Toll House Cookie. During World War II, US soldiers overseas who'd been sent the cookies from their loved ones resulted in hundreds of other soldiers writing home asking to be sent the same cookies, and Ruth was inundated with requests for her recipe from around the world. She also gave it to Nestle and was apparently paid with a lifetime supply of chocolate. Thus, thanks to Ruth, the chocolate chip cookie became an American favourite and eventually a worldwide phenomenon. So our lineup of hard-baked chocolate chip cookies from around the world this week is as follows. From the USA, the iconic American brand, Pepperidge Farm. From the UK, a popular favourite, Foxes. From France, the market leading brand, Lou. From Australia, the much loved Woolworths classic, The King. From Switzerland and Germany, a European favourite, Milka. And finally, Italy's most popular cookie, Pavisi Gocciole. Price-wise, these generally all fall into a fairly affordable range, although the cost to get hold of them may of course differ depending on where you're based. But you can see the price that I paid for each of them is shown below. As you can see, Pepperidge Farm costs the most, 100 grams, followed by Milka, with Pavisi Gocciole being the least expensive, followed by Foxes. Pavisi are in fact five times cheaper gram for gram than Pepperidge Farm. Nutritional wise, being cookies, these are not going to be the healthiest snacks, but there is some variation. So here are the four key groups we always stick to on the Taste Test channel, which are energy, fat, sugar and salt. The chart below lists the brands from top to bottom in energy content per 100 grams. As you can see, they're all fairly similar, but Lou from France has slightly more energy than the others, followed by the US Pepperidge Farm, and Pavisi from Italy has the least, followed by Woolies King from Australia. Fat analysis has exactly the same rankings, with Lou containing the most fat and Woolies King and Pavisi containing the least. Sugar, however, is a different story, with Pepperidge Farm containing the most sugar, followed by Woolies, and Pavisi containing the least by some margin, 10 grams less in fact than its closest rival, Foxes. Finally, salt shows Lou contains the most salt, followed by Milka, with Woolies King containing the least. I should also mention here quickly that regrettably all but one of these brands has the ecologically destructive palm oil listed on the ingredients, with Pavisi from Italy being the exception, despite being the most economical, so a big well done to them. But how will all of this affect the taste? Well, that's why we're here. So we're going to start with USA favourite Pepperidge Farm. In 1929, Margaret Rudkin moved to her new family home, Pepperidge Farm, in Connecticut. Her youngest son suffered allergies from processed foods, so she started home baking tasty bread, using real butter and stone ground whole wheat. Word spread, and the boy's doctor even prescribed it to others. Ten years on, she'd sold half a million loaves. The range expanded to include cookies from the 50s and their famous goldfish crackers a decade on. The business has been owned by Campbell's Soup Company since the 60s. Now, these American-style cookies were added in the 80s, and this particular pack are the Double Chocolate Nantucket, hard-baked with dark chocolate, although the percentage isn't stated. So what we're going to do is open all the packs first so we can compare them visually side by side, and then we'll move on to the tasting. So we'll open up the bag, and there's some chunky-looking cookies in there in a plastic tray, and we'll remove the wrapper, there was actually two of these trays, by the way, each with several cookies in there. So they're a decent size, large lumps of chocolate in there from top to bottom, and a cracky sugariness on the surface. The aroma's very nice, quite a fresh smell, not at all processed, and with light vanilla overtones. And I'll look forward to tasting some of them after we've opened the others. Next from the UK is Foxes, one of Britain's most popular cookie brands, or as we call them in the UK, Biscuits. Foxes have been around since 1853, originally making brandy snaps from a small bakehouse in Yorkshire to sell at fairs in the north of England. Brandy snaps, by the way, are syrupy tasting snappy tubes, often served filled with cream. Foxes branched out and today they bake over 6 billion biscuits a year. Acquired by the brand Ferrero in 2020, they're available in Europe, America and Asia. 
Incidentally, choc chip cookies first arrived in the UK in the 50s, popularised by Maryland, another leading brand. These ones are from Fox's fabulous range and milk chocolate content is 27%. So we've opened the pack and there's a plastic tray in there again. Just the one though this time with eight cookies in. So they're similar looking to the Pepperidge Farm with good sized milk choc chunks in going all the way through to the base. The aroma is more subtle though and with slight wheaty or wholemeal undertones. Next from France is Lou, the market leading French brand. Lou began as a small family business in 1846 when two French bakers married and began creating elegant cookies imprinted with their two initials. Their passion for fine ingredients and unique creations helped them become one of the most successful French food brands and today Lou biscuits are available in 100 countries and include Tuck, Belvita, Mercado and Pims. In fact, 25 packs of Lou are consumed per second. Today they're owned by American supergiant Mondelez International. By the way, the word granola on this pack has nothing apparently to do with honey-coated cereal, it's just the name of one of the Lou ranges. Gros éclat means large shards, referring to the chocolate content, which is 37%. So we've opened the pack and we can see there's a dark plastic tray inside, so we'll remove the wrapper and have a look. So again, a generous amount of varying size chips from top through to bottom and a sugary looking surface like the US ones. A much stronger aroma on this one though, all of bitter chocolate, no vanilla or anything, but very pleasant. Next, an Aussie favourite, the King, chunky choc chip cookies from Woolworth Supermarket, affectionately known down under as Woolies. This brand first began in Sydney in 1924 as Woolworth's stupendous bargain basement. They've got no connection to the Woolworth chain stores of America or the UK, but the founders cheekily stole the name when they discovered it hadn't been registered in Australia. The number of stores quickly grew, with a store in every state by the 40s, and from the 50s they expanded into food, with many of their own brand items becoming much-loved Aussie favourites, including the cookies we have here. An interesting serving suggestion uh, we just saw on this one, a royal sandwich, which is simply ice cream served between two cookies. Not something I've ever tried, but if you're after a sugar hit on a hot day, then why not? Chocolate content is an impressive 40%. So we've opened the box and we can see there's a foil bag inside. And inside that is this double tray. A few broken ones in there, no doubt though, due to traveling from down under to get here. Very impressive amount of chips in this one, as you can see, and it has a darker, more cooked appearance with browner edges. The aroma is quite different. There's strong vanilla, but also more of a long life chocolate flavor smell coming through. So I'll be interested to see how they taste. Next, the Swiss German brand Milka and their Choco cookies, which are popular across Europe and available worldwide. Milka originated in Switzerland in 1901, but are primarily produced in Germany and known globally for their Alpine milk chocolate. Their origins date back to 1825, when Swiss chocolatier Philip Souchard started selling chocolate-based dessert in his patisserie in Switzerland. He expanded his operation, and finally in 1901, the first Milka chocolate bar was born. The company's been owned by American Mondelez International, formerly Kraft Foods since the 90s, who also own Lou, our French biscuit brand. Chocolate content on these ones is 31%. So the pack's open, and we can see a plastic tray visible inside again. And we've got three layers of cookies, a little bit smaller sized, but no shortage of chips, as you can see, which are, of course, Milka chocolate. The aroma is mostly of a strong sweet vanilla, but again, very pleasant. Finally, we have Italy's most popular cookie, Pavisi Gocciole, and you may be surprised to learn this is actually one of Italy's most popular breakfasts. Italians regularly eat them in the morning with milk, coffee or hot chocolate. The company was formed in 1937 when Mario Pavisi started producing biscuits in a small bakery in Novara. They were an instant success and he went on to create some of Italy's most iconic and nutritious cookies and crackers. And he didn't stop there. Mario also created the first ever rest stop for Italian motorists, with Pavisi autogrill bars being a common feature on Italy's motorways. They've been owned by Italian brand Barilla since the 90s. These ones, Gocciole, were launched in the 80s and are now Italy's top selling cookie, which speaks volumes because cookies are a big deal in Italy. I have to say, top marks for ingredients and ethics. This is the only brand of the group who don't use palm oil. Their eggs are free range, there's no preservatives or hydrogenated fats and the chocolate's responsibly sourced. So a big thumbs up for that. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they taste. 
Chocolate content is 14%. So we'll open up the bag. And that is literally jam packed. No plastic packaging either, which is good. They're very different looking than the others with a smooth baked powdery surface and teardrop shape. Much smaller chips, which are more embedded in the cookie. And the aroma is vanilla-y with subtle cocoa notes. So looking at them all side by side, you can now see much more clearly the differences between them. Woolies King certainly has the most chunk, followed by Pepperidge Farm and Lou Granola, which are also the three largest in size, with the King having the darkest baked colour. Foxes and Milka are smaller, but still have plenty of chips, with Foxes also being the palest. Pavisi Gocciole stands out as the most unusual looking, with the least inclusions and a darker baked surface. But with all that said, I'm really curious to discover just how much they vary in taste. So let's move on to the tasting. So we'll start with Pepperidge Farm Nantucket Cookie from the USA. So there's a light, dry, crunchy texture, which is just what you want from a hard-baked cookie. The chunks are full of flavour and melt in the mouth, not heavy or fudgy, and they taste like good quality chocolate. The sweetness is actually very well balanced. It doesn't taste overly sweet at all, and there's no overpowering flavors or aftertaste, just subtle vanilla. Overall, I would say this is very nice, pleasingly subtle and surprisingly fresh tasting. Very pleasant indeed. Next, we'll try Fox's Fabulous Cookies from the UK. So although it's hard baked, it's a softer biscuit, not as snappy or crunchy as the last one. The texture's more floury with slight wheaty or wholemeal flavour. It tastes slightly sweeter than the first one, but not overly sweet, and the aftertaste is wheaty. Overall, this has extra substance to the cookie, which tastes more homemade in flavour, but the chocolate's not as punchy or full flavoured. Nevertheless, very pleasant. Next is Lou Granola from France. So the texture's lovely and light and crumbly, more crunchy than Fox's, not as crunchy as Pepperidge. The flavour's dominated by the chips rather than the cookie, which has less flavour of its own, but the chocolate's strong and sweet and good quality. The biscuit's mildly sweet, but there's a lingering salty aftertaste, which I find a bit too salty. Overall though, this is a very well-made cookie where the quality and amount of the chips win through, and the texture is the perfect vehicle to carry them. Very nice. Next is The King by Woolworths of Australia. So the texture is hard and snappy, but it melts in the mouth, which is nice. It's the sweetest tasting of the cookies so far, mainly coming from the chunks, which I have to say to me, tastes more like cocoa flavor candy or cooking chocolate. And it seems to give a long lingering and somewhat artificial aftertaste. Overall, top marks on the volume of chips and the texture, but disappointing on the flavor. However, Aussies rave about these, so it could, of course, just come down to the chocolate taste that different nations are used to. Next, the Swiss-German brand Milka Choco Cookies. So the texture's dry and crunchy and a bit more powdery. It's almost reminiscent of a rusk. There's a strong vanilla influence, similar to that of a Danish cookie, and it has a medium to high sweetness, which provides the aftertaste, although not as sweet as the Aussie one. The chips are smaller, so more subtle in flavour. Overall, it's a nice all-round cookie. Nothing outstanding, but perfectly pleasant. Finally, we have Pavisi Gocciole chocolate cookies. So the texture's not so much crunchy as super dry, very powdery and floury. In fact, it coats the inside of your mouth instantly and strips it of moisture. You can see why they're served with milk or coffee. Again, there's a baby's rusk-like quality to this and the flavours are simple, not very sweet and you don't really taste any depth to the chocolate, but it does provide a sweet cocoa aftertaste. Overall, this is very different, but there's a wholesome, very natural shortcake taste to it that I found really grows on you, but it definitely needs milk or tea. So that covers how they all differ in taste and now that we've tasted them all, as always, just for fun, we award our Taste Test Channel winners and Best in Class award. I have to say all six of these have different things going for them, so it's really been quite a difficult one to judge. Woolies King from Australia is literally packed full of big chunks with a nice snappy texture, but for me I just found the flavour of the chocolate a bit artificial, but I'm certainly not going to argue with a nation of Aussies. The Swiss German Milka has a good all-round flavour and if you prefer a sweeter milk chocolate and a powdery texture, this would be a perfect choice. And Fox's Fabulous from the UK are a good, flavoursome, softly wheaty textured biscuit with a somewhat more homemade taste and subtle milk choc chips. But our top three chocolate chip cookie brands from around the world this week are as follows. 
Winning third place, Pavisi Gocciole from Italy. Although these aren't your typical type of cookie, I feel they hold at least a well-earned third place. They excel at being a simple, healthier, shortcake style of chocolate chip cookie and are actually extremely Moorish. I'd urge you to try them and let me know what you think. Just have plenty of milk to hand. Winning second place, Lou Granola from France. Lots of punchy, good quality chocolate chunks in this one with a crumbly, crunchy texture that sets them off well. Just a little less salt and these would have been even better. But in first place this week, in the popular hard-baked choc chip cookies from around the world, the Taste Test Channel Best in Class award goes to Pepperidge Farm Nantucket from the USA. A really well-balanced combo of a surprisingly fresh-tasting light and crunchy vanilla cookie with lots of big chocolate chunks that melt in the mouth. A really nice option. So well done to Pepperidge Farm. And as always, taste is subjective, and this is purely my point of view, but I hope it's provided some useful insights. Now, I mentioned earlier, things didn't quite go to plan with the making of this video at first. Here's what happened. So, looking at them all side by side, you can now see... Oh, I'm just filming at the moment. Hi. What the hell? Hi. How did oh, you boy, get boy, here? Boy, boy, boy. Cookie. How are you even real? Uh, no, no, please don't touch these. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a chocolate chip cookie. Oh, boy, I tell you what, I'll let you have some when I'm finished, okay? Cookies! Okay. God damn it. So personally I'm still in shock, but I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. And if you have, it would be lovely if you'd subscribe and do click the notification bell to ensure you don't miss out on any of our regular taste tests. And a huge thank you from me to everyone who supports our new and growing channel. Every single person who gives a thumbs up, shares a video or subscribes really does make a difference. We're not sponsored, so to the handful of people who support us via Patreon, we're super honoured and super grateful. Meanwhile, thanks for watching and... Bye-bye.